Hey people, I'm Sergio Paris and you're watching Rugby Rapa. Brought to you by Irish Rugby Tours, the Rugby Tour Specialists, AFIA Sports Training, committed to developing the sporting potential of future players in the US, UK, and across the world. And Dub Pies, Down Under Pies, stop by, say hi, and eat pie. And the Pagan Whistle on West 36th Street. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy talking rugby in Midtown Manhattan. And today we have one of the game's biggest stars, without question, Mr. Sergio Parise. Sergio is on the horn with us via Italy. Hello. Uh, there he is. Hi. Sergio. Good, good. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Okay, while we wait for Mr. Parise, let's look at his astounding resume. I believe it was 134 caps for Italy. And remember, this is a number eight, ladies and gentlemen, not a guy playing on a wing, and it's not a knock on wings, but 134 caps for Italy, captain since 2008, 295 caps for the top 14 team, Stade Francais. And this is after 60-some caps with Benetton Treviso. Oh, there he is, a true rugby legend, Sergio. Buongiorno. How are you? Good to you, thank you. First things first, you, sir, have proven that real men do indeed wear pink. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I don't know, but I, in any case, I have no choice. <laughs> I must have put the jersey, the Stade Francais, and uh, yeah, every every year we had uh, different jerseys, and uh, it was true in 2005, I think, was the first time we played with a pink jersey. So, you know, I think it's something that changed a bit, a little bit the vision of everyone about our sport as well, and was something, you know, the great idea for... Our president, uh, Max Wazzini. You know, on top of that, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking of Scott Lavallo, your former teammate and mutual friend of ours. And I'm thinking between the three of us, bald is beautiful. <laughs> yes, yeah, Scotty Lavallo is a really nice guy from Seattle. I think he's from Seattle. And uh, yeah, he was, was a really good teammate in Paris. And uh, he doing the calendar as well. So, yeah, you know, he, he really enjoyed it. Yes, those Stade Francais calendars. But... That's enough fodder for an entire segment on its own, so let's get back to the rugby. You are a true representation of global rugby. You were born in Argentina to Italian parents. You went to university there, but at a very young age, you were in a Azzurri, an Italian national team jersey. I think it was 17 years old when you were playing U19s. And then at 18, you made your debut in Hamilton against the All Blacks in New Zealand. Unbelievable story. Um, but then you also had a long, stellar career playing professionally in Paris after a brief stint in Italy, brief being five years, and with the Italian national team. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a long story, but uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, I born, I born in Argentina because my my parents were well, like both, both Italian, but were were in Argentina to to work and I started playing rugby there after at 17 years old I moved to to Italy to Treviso and played with the uh, Benetton rugby for five years and um, yeah since, since I'm playing in France in Stade Francais so yeah um, it's a, a nice a nice, a nice story. <laughs> Your team the Italian national team is going to play under the big lights in America at Soldier Field on the rugby weekend against Ireland number two in the world. What does it mean for these guys to get that exposure? I know they've played in big venues before, but this is America, the awakening giant in rugby, Soldier Field, right under the spotlights against number two in the world, Ireland, who's got a real shot at winning the World Cup in Japan. Uh, definitely it's, a, it's such a big honor to be, uh, to be involved in this game. Uh, it's great for, for us as players and as federation to move in to another country and... Uh, uh, doing our, doing rugby, playing rugby, so our, playing our passion, and uh, definitely Chicago and the Soldier Stadium will be an awesome uh, and awesome place to you know to play some good rugby. So uh, we're really looking forward to to go there. We know we play against such a great team like Ireland, so I think it's gonna be you know uh, exciting moment in uh, in Chicago for for us and uh, you know here all the team. Really looking forward to to go there and uh, you know enjoy 
enjoy uh, enjoy the week in uh, USA, enjoy of the game, and you know it's an opportunity as well for a few a lot of players to show their potential for you know for the next World Cup in Japan next year. So let me ask you, as a captain and as a player, do you tell the guys to to tone it down, to not get too excited, to, or, or do you tell them to we got to go like gangbusters right out of the gate because this is such a good team. We got to let them know they're in a match. That is the only message for me, and we can't we can't go out there and just trying to you know play in a game, just uh, you know not be excited or motivating. I think the motivation must be at two hundred percent. We we are always uh, not at the same level like, like as as Ireland, but uh, I'm pretty sure that the boys uh, looking forward to going to Chicago and play as best as they can. Uh, and do the, the the biggest match we can do because obviously if we want to compete against against a, a great side like Ireland we we have we have no choice so you know uh, perform well against them uh, is is gonna help as well uh, to the team to everyone to grow in more confidence in ourselves to you know to looking forward for the other tests in Italy against Georgia Australia New Zealand and and of course to build for the next World Cup. Well said. Well said. As an individual, you have played on some of the biggest stages on the globe in rugby. Uh, and you play with a flair. You have an entertaining style. Despite the fact that you're six foot five, 240 pounds and can run through a brick wall, you also have great hands and can run the ball. Your no-look passes, your behind-the-back the behind the passes, the pop pass, and even through the legs and under the leg passes. You look like you have a lot of fun out there is what I'm trying to say. But how much fun was it at Twickenham against England when you guys bamboozled Eddie Jones and Dylan Hartley and James Haskell with the uncontested ruck stuff, yeah, it was funny. It was funny, I and mean, was 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 you know was a strange week because uh, our defenses coach uh, Brendan Venter, uh, he, he tell us he tells to the team in the meeting room like Monday morning and say, okay, boys, we go to Twickenham. And we're gonna defend like that, and everyone was shocked in the room. I say, "You're crazy! What do you say? Why? <laughs> well, it's gonna be impossible to do that." And uh, you know, sounds first time sounds crazy. Second time, the boys say, "Well, why not?" And the third time, we're training during the, all of the week, and I think we're going out there in Twickenham. Uh, you know, put put the English team in a in a you know in a lot of uh, under a lot of pressure. So, you know, I think we. <laughs> We uh, we help as well to change a little bit the rules because after after the the game in in, in Twickenham and after this nation uh, uh, World Rugby change uh, change the rules about the offside lines after the rugs and everything so you know I think uh, was was good for the rugby. <laughs> How great was it seeing Hartley and Haskell get the the rugby lesson from the ref about him not being the coach? Yeah, it was you know when you are on the field, uh, you're trying to you know you chat with the referee, and you hear uh, of course the, the other players and the captain. And I remember of course uh, Jean uh, was a uh, poet, a French referee that I know very well because he refereed me in France with South France a few times. And when I saw Dylan Harley when they just to do and to answer, I'm I'm not ask 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 to your coach, and uh, the face was, was was really shocked. So I know I, I was was funny was something different and I think we we bring something different on on this game. Uh, we are really close to to make a, a good result uh, in Twickenham. So you know was was a good and funny experience. Yeah, Twickenham is is just so great. So many stories, so many memories, and certainly this is one of them. Where? is your favorite place or what was your favorite place to play as a professional and for your nation? Well, definitely with the, playing for the Italian team, my, my, one of my favorite plays, uh, definitely my favorite place is, is the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Uh, now it's called Principality, I think, Stadium. Uh, it's one of, it's my favorite. It's, uh, it's an incredible atmosphere and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's it's awesome uh, for for a player if you have the opportunity to play there. It's, it's incredibly uh, nice and uh, and of and of course Twickenham is another uh, such a great stadium to to play rugby. So that is my two most favorite places. And as playing in Stade Français in France, I uh, had the opportunity to play in the Stade de France as well. And uh, uh, in front of eighty thousand people, is you know it was was good as well. And, and now I remember a little bit because I play a few a few games. We play a, 
We play at San Siro Stadium in Milan against the All Blacks in 2009 in front of 80,000 people as well. And was was said was a really original game as well. Yeah, France, huh? It's it's not a bad way to make a living playing professional rugby in Paris, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. No, no. France, France is in a really good place, and Paris is definitely well, it's like home now. Sergio, please stay. we got to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I've been blind since I was four, and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste, and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has the taste and the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle on West 36th Street. And we are back with Mr. Sergio Perese. Sergio, is there a single moment that stands out for you as the most emotional before a kickoff? Of course, I, I say every time. Uh, for me personally, the first game I, I played with the Italian jersey, I was 18 years old. And maybe because I was really young, definitely because was definitely my first test was against uh, the All Blacks in New Zealand. And uh, I was 18 years old. I remember... The day I go to the stadium, uh, walking into the stadium and walking just uh, into the stadium, I just crossed John Alomu with his headphones, just listening to music, and I look him like a, you know, like a kid. <laughs> and uh, you know, as uh, in the first time you s you are you sing your national anthem and you put the jersey for the first time, that is a moment you never forget. And uh, yeah, the, and after I play plenty of match, I remember as well the first time I I be captain for the Italian team in 2008. We played in Ireland, and uh, uh, my parents uh, they didn't tell me nothing. Uh, I just ring uh, on the week and I say, well, uh, it's gonna be my first game as captain. So they were really excited. And uh, the day of the game on the morning, and after that we do the breakfast with the team and we doing a little bit of stretching. Uh, just I have my both parents arriving to the hotel and, uh, you know, be there so for my first game with, as captain was a really emotional moment of, for me as well. Do you keep jerseys? Do you keep any memorabilia? Yeah, definitely. My, of course, my first, my first cap we did, I keep the jersey and, uh, and uh, my fifth, 50 caps, I, I keep it, 100 caps, I keep it. And the rest, the rest I try to, to swap as well with the, swap with the other the other teams, yeah, you have, you know, when when in a few years I will be in, at home uh, drinking a beer and uh, remember about my career, it's going to be, you know, good to see some some jerseys of, of, of every country I play against. And you earned all those caps playing number eight at a very physical position and a lot of the times with the, the enemy being able to try to neutralize you because there wasn't a great wealth of talent around you and I'm not knocking your teammates. And I'm not not knocking backs or anybody else like that. So save your letters, everybody. But you did play number eight and have all these caps. What's the secret to your success and longevity? Well, uh, definitely, you know, when when you go over the 30, 30 years old, you must take care of really take care of your body. Uh, rugby changed a lot. I remember when I started playing, it was not the same. Uh, so since five, seven years, eight years maybe, they the rugby. Uh, you know, becomes really, really physical. Uh, you play a lot of games with uh, with uh, my club, with San Francisco, with Italy, and uh, you know the, the 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 most important thing for me now. I'm a, a 35 years old, and uh, I'm 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 on, on the end of my career. But definitely after 30 years old, I starting to take care as well of my recovery after games, uh, time of sleep. Uh, um, you know how you eat, how you recover after a game. Uh, doing a lot of things to take care of it, to try to play. Uh, you know, still playing at, at good level. So it's you know, it's, it's you must be make some sacrifice. Uh, you know, to trying to conserve your body and keep your energy. But I'm really enjoying doing. And the most important thing for me is be mentally fresh, mental fresh, and you know, have every time energy to keep keep playing. 
So which will we see next? A behind the back pass or a through the legs pass? You know, um, I mean, I don't think I don't think uh, before playing a game, look, I'm gonna do and you know, look pass or I'm gonna do a chip or I'm gonna kick. It just I just play the situation. I I'm really confident on my skills and uh, I know I think we must enjoy it as well and and trying to sometimes you know. Uh, uh, you know, you must take some risks when you play, and uh, you know it's my my way to play. And really, I'm really enjoying it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Was there a player that you looked up to as a player? In my position, number eight. I every time looking uh, about really number eights that like you know to uh, carry the ball, carry the ball hard, be uh, technically uh, good enough to play. Uh, like a close game with the forwards, but be able to play with the with the with the backs as well. I really uh, like uh, number eight. We play with uh, Wales a lot of years ago. Uh, uh, Scott Quinnell, and uh, he was a really big guy who would be able to, uh, you know, carry the ball and after play uh, with the backs. And uh, you know, um, there are the, I, I had the the chance to play against. A lot of lots of big big number eights. Kieran Reed as well is really 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 good. The number eight really like the way he played. You mentioned Kieran Reed. I I asked him and I'll ask you if you were to play in the NFL, what position would you play? I don't know. What do you think? I, I'm not. I'd say tight end. Tight end, yeah. You get to run with the ball. You get to smash people, or maybe middle linebacker. Yeah, why not? Would be would be great. I, I never. Uh, Believe me, I, n- I never see an, uh, an, uh, a game of NFL. I, 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 I see, really? Yeah, I saw a lot of game on TV. But I never be, I never be uh, on the same. It's something that I will obviously want to to do. I, I be, I be uh, twice in uh, USA to uh, New York, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, Las Vegas. But I, I be, I go to see NBA game and and uh, and a baseball game as well. Uh, we. Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I was there. I was there. Was it warm enough for you in Houston? Oh, <laughs> very, very hot. <laughs> but yeah, but what's fun? <laughs> yeah, I was just sitting there watching you guys. I'm in a sport coat and maybe a shirt, you know, and I'm sitting there just wow. dripping sweat and thinking, yeah, I, I was, can't complain for a second. Was, Look at these guys. It was really hot. It's really difficult to play. Before you go. I won't ask about an active player because of gamesmanship and and psychology and all that jazz, but somebody that's retired, who was the toughest player that you ever played against? Sebastian Chabal, the French. Sure. Yeah. Chabal. Really? Of course. You had a lock heads with him in the top 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mais c'est tout The guy's a beast. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's really, you know, uh, he tackling really, really, really hard. And uh, you know, was uh, one of one of the number eights, uh, the toughest number eight I play against. <laughs> that had to be an experience, unbelievable. Yeah, definitely yes. <laughs> He's got great hair. Us yeah. bald guys can say that. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, Sebastian. Yeah. I'm coming after you, pal. I'm watching you, pal, for picking on my friend <laughs> yeah. here. Just kidding. Good stuff. Okay, changing gears again. Playing against the Pumas. With your Argentinian ties and your Italian ties, what's that like? Well, first first time was a little bit uh, a, li- a little bit uh, you know strange because obviously I go into the school in Argentina and uh, uh, was when they sang sing the, the national anthem was funny because I know all the words and <laughs> I know perfectly the, the anthem, but. Uh, no, it was you know for me and uh, I say every time it was was as another test match. I really I really appreciate uh, you know the I know a lot of Argentinian players playing for the Pumas and uh, and of course I have a few friends uh, in Argentina as well. But uh, you know I, I'm growing in an Italian family and uh, I put uh, the Italian jersey at 17 years old for the first time with the, the 19 team. So you know I'm. Um, it's just the first time it was a little bit strange, but I know it's better. I, I understand the language, so maybe it's a little bit easier, you know, to understand the calls in the lineups and everything. That's, that's got to tick them off, the coaching staff. How many languages do you speak? Uh, Spanish, uh, Italian, French, and English. A little bit, yeah. 
You son of a... I'm so jealous of you. You're like this perfect guy. All right. <laughs> Rob Carney, biggest victory in Ireland's history? Uh, yeah, it's got to be up there. Uh, we've been waiting a long time to do that. And not just for this team, but for every Irish team that has gone before us that has been beaten by the All Blacks. Uh, it's a very difficult feat, but this will go down in a long living history for Irish rugby. Italy's playing at Soldier Field. It's the home of the Chicago Bears. It's an iconic American venue. What is your message to your guys about playing on that big American stage? What what wisdom can you impart on them? Definitely, definitely to first thing to enjoy, enjoy the moment. Uh, I we don't play in such a great stadium like the Soldier Stadium in Chicago every day, and uh, it's a nice opportunity to represent Italy in Chicago and USA and against a great team like Ireland. So just to enjoy the moment and you know give give everything for for the jersey, be proud after the game about our performance and, you know, you never know, maybe at the end of the game, we can have a, a, a nice result. Well, the result here has certainly been a treat, Sergio. Uh, your time is much, much appreciated. Thank you very much and hope, hope to see you maybe soon. That would be très magnifique. And if you come to New York City, I've got a New York Rugby Club winter hat to keep your head warm, which will make you an honorary member. And the New York Rugby Club is the oldest standalone club in the United States, established in 1929. And I know that because I was there when it started. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Sergio Parise. Matt McCarthy, on behalf of Mr. Parise and the Italian national team and Stade Francais, here at Rugby Wrap-Up at Studio 34 in New York City, signing off. Grazie.